Welcome to the Mentaling with Nature podcast. You're going to have to redo it. Why? Because he just interrupted. (laughs) (laughs) He's not wrong. What the fuck? Yeah, I think that was terrible. You really did. It was a bit self-fulfilling there, but you know. All right. Wait, 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 wait. Wait. (laughs) Whose side are we on? Woo. Welcome to the Metal Loose Spoons God, God piece, apparently. God piece. <laughs> Is that not what we call these? Everything was fine until the microphone plugged in. God. See, I think that's the thing is that you need to not tell us when we're live. A podcast about life, death, and the process that transforms one to another. We are taxidermists, printmakers, performers, collectors, advocates, and anything we need to be in order to carry out the work we do as naturalists. Each week, Mike Price, Karina Young, Nate Wessel, Jeremy Johnson, and guests will explore topics ranging from ethics to arachnophobia, bone cleaning to stuffing tigers. So go on, love, put the kettle on and give us a listen, won't you? But first we're going to talk about what... We're excited about this week. Karina, what are you excited about this week? I want to go last. So that oh, Mike, what are you excited about this week? Uh, <clears throat> I hate this every week. Dan, what are you excited about this I'm week? I'm excited about how angry you are about that. <laughs> you got to pull something out of your ass here. Um, House of Cards, season three. There you go. Oh, yeah. Mm, never seen it. Oh, it's very nice. Did watch the British one first. Oh, there's two different types. Yes, that's oh. I haven't watched the British one yet. Because Mike, I've... what are you excited about? Yeah. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> I'm excited that I just tanned the fox that I skinned, like, almost a year ago, so I'll get to mount another fox, which is a rare occasion for those of us who deal in roadkill, because foxes really. Mm-hmm. Nate, what are you excited about? I got into a school, wee! Yeah, that's right. <clears throat> Hang on, you're gonna, you're gonna put this on us now? Hmm? Uh, Ohio you State. You sent an email. Oh, oh I didn't get no right. emails. You've got an email. We'll talk later. There's been mm-hmm. issues with our, our servers here at the office. I'm, um, I'm waiting to hear from one more school. Yeah, he, he's waiting to hear from one more school. But he officially got it. But I got into one. It's a good one. Yay! I didn't know that. The Ohio State University? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Football. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Go Bucks! All right. Uh, what are you excited about? I am excited about all the fun things that we've got going on this month. It's, it's, uh, it's several of our birthdays. Um, Who's? mine and Mike's. Oh, happy birthday! You got a March birthday. I have I have an idea for the birthdays. I yeah. just found a um, Chuck and Cheese murder mystery kit, <laughs> yeah. and I think we should have murder mystery. <laughs> oh, we do so well at that. Wait, they, we should no, no, no. They, I, no, they would murder? spend weeks setting up the murder. No, it's a kit, it would be so ridiculous. it's already set up. They're they not going to have any fun then. What? Well, they, they can, can set up the fun. next one. We can just so. do this one from my kit because I've been carrying this kit around okay. forever. We're having a good time talking to him. Well, you've got like a suitcase full of murder? <laughs> no, I, that's me. Always. You just open it up and suddenly I've like it looks it like someone's Dan. been murdered? Oh, it's the magic murder bag. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. I love the magic murder bag. <laughs> it's a bit messy. <laughs> I haven't tidied. I am Henry Tell, what are you excited about? No, I'm not. I'm, uh, what? What am I excited about? Birthdays. No, I don't <laughs> care about the birthdays I'm caring about. <laughs> we've got I'll a lot of things going on this month. Yeah. We've got... We've got uh, um, well, one big one is is the Carnegie Show opens uh, in two weeks. I'm excited about. What are you excited about? Just <laughs> <laughs> wait for your cue. <laughs> this is organic. She you can't, can't, just so be excited. can't just be excited. <laughs> she can't hold I'm on. excited about our flute in the Bachfest parade. Damn straight. Tell me more. Oh. Well, we've been planning a float for the Bachfest parade, and yeah. Bachfest is a beer festival, or wait, a festival celebrating. The coming of spring, mm-hmm. aka it's a reason for us to all get really drunk, and so they make Bach beer, mm-hmm. and um, there's goats, and we have a goat. We have a really beautiful cashmere goat. Name's Totes. His name's Totes, and um, do you have a tote bag? He will. He sells them. He sells them. <laughs> <laughs> at that total of totes at the mall. Have you never been at the mall? We also have fanny packs. So far in the market, the mall the farm. Yeah, he's really bad at the cash register. It's a mess. <laughs> I can visualize it. Yeah. 
Huh. Anyway, so um, he probably tries to eat everything too. Um, and so so we're we're gonna have a float in the Bachfest parade, and we're really excited about that. And this year we are registered, <coughs> and so we could potentially win a trophy. Mm-hmm. And so I'm looking forward to getting that trophy. And uh, how big is the trophy? How many it's, tiers? It's, it's pretty damn big. It's pretty big. Okay. Like yeah. three tiers or more? I think it's like three. Uh, There's two nice different trophies. That's a serious trophy. trophy. Yeah, yeah. One yeah. of them is kind of boring, I think, and then the other one is fun. Uh, and our sound effect for for tonight, as uh, you know, last week was dripping water. Sound effect for tonight is <gasps> not what has been in every podcast, but. <laughs> Karina, what are you doing? I'm knitting a scarf. For a, for a sheep. So we're going to make this scarf, and we're going to attach it to a lamb, and that lamb's going to be knitting a scarf, and the yarn's going to be coming out of its belly. Mm-hmm. It's going to be real cute. It's going to be real adorable. He's going to be in a rocking chair. I've decided the lamb's a boy. Okay. <laughs> all, right, all right. He's a little boy scarf with a bonnet on. <laughs> Wait, you got to decide that? I just have been referring to it as a, in with a male pronoun. That's going to be anatomically correct. Doesn't it have one or the other? I don't know. Probably has one know? or the other. Do you know what it's uh, a boy or It could be hermaphroditic. I think it's a boy. <laughs> is it? Okay, I'm well pretty then, sure, then. I'm pretty sure Lammy is Then I'm fucking boy. right. I know. That's all that matters. All right. okay. <laughs> so what is our topic tonight? Last week we talked a little bit about, uh, about evolution, both human and general animal. Um... And I think this week, this week we're going to kind of continue that conversation mm-hmm. a little bit more, but get a little bit more in depth with it. And I think that there's a few things uh, that kind of went back and forth last week that that maybe we need to to do some clarification on. Uh, Nate, you heard some things, didn't you, uh, when you're listening? Yeah. So I I wanted you to clarify um, your your distinction between correction and augmentation. Um, for uh, let's see, what what conversation part was that? Um, so glasses versus bionic eyes. Okay. Um, so what I'm what I'm basically thinking of when we're talking about our own taking control of our own evolution is that we are looking at certain things as as being mistakes, genetic mistakes, or or abnormalities, or things that need to be corrected um, rather than than just kind of improving on a, on a general theme so like the augmentation thing is going nowhere but but here's okay well, well okay so you're speaking about uh, correction versus augmentation mm-hmm. of innate human traits now are, are you concerned about how that individual's genes were expressed and whether or not we should be messing with them and trying to fix the problems that they have? Oh, I think I think it's that, that, that of course we should be trying to fix the problems that they have, um, because not just because we can, but but uh, because we should, because it's good. It's it moderately ethical, but you know. Um, but it's it's I think and and yeah, I think it is. But when we're looking at at things like correction versus augmentation, it's, it's really about the way you say it. I'm correcting my vision or I'm making it better. Um, and I think that it's the mindset in a lot of ways. They can be the same sort of uh, disabilities or the same sort of uh, problems uh, it, to the point where we get to the to thinking that correction, that augmentation is the end goal. It is it is To improve upon rather than from biology. Bring you back to. Exactly. Bring okay. you to normal versus exceed those that are around you that are normal. Like, like I think there's a lot of movies and, and, <clears throat> and stories and things like that that are out there in which people like get the memory chips and want to you know and, and, and but my argument last week too mm-hmm. was that that's already happening uh, when you see the kind of, of drugs that a lot of college students are on or, or even, even you coffee. know coffee going back even further I think it's always been the case uh, I think that we have a little bit more Ability now to to kind of take more of that control. So here's here's the distinction that that I see though. There's there's a way where we can augment our our perceptions of things and our um, and the way we act, such as with drugs, coffee, alcohol, whatever that that work to our benefit. Um, but those things are fairly simple to produce. Um, and when you talk about 
grinding lenses or or bionic eyes and nerve implants or whatever mm-hmm. else. Um, that's not the same sort of relationship to the environment uh, that that is defined by human coffee relationship. You say it actually that's changes it changes your perception beyond what your human capacity could normally do. No, no, no. Compared to, like, no, what, if, you walk it's a, if you get a bionic eye, okay. I'm saying it's a less stable situation. Um, coffee is good. We can leave coffee alone. It's still going to be coffee. Okay. Um, the, the bionic eye industry is something that needs to be maintained by a complex civilization. But we are a complex civilization, so... For now. Okay, so, yeah, if, if civilization breaks down, we're probably still going to be able to make more coffee than bionic eyes. I'll grant you that. Yeah. Um... But is that a major concern for you? Like, should we only build technologies that we can maintain? Because yeah, then we I, should not be using I, phones. I think yes. to the extent that we... Phones. phones, like cell phones. You can't do that, like, when you go back to... Uh, but without couch. without cell phones, we can still operate. We're still human, we're still functional, we eat, we poop, we have sex. Without bionic eyes, if we've had our eyes removed and replaced with bionic eyes and they break down and we're in a world that doesn't have a bi- bionic eye factory nearby, then we're dead. But if well, you replaced your eyes because they weren't working in the first place, right. then you were going to be blind anyway. Yeah, this I was going to say, but mm-hmm. people exist. The bionic eye isn't the best example because there are plenty of blind people who are doing just fine. That's ex- but th- that's, that's exactly the point of augmentation versus correction. That's my point. Hmm. Is the choice to to remove what is naturally fine, as far as we would have our standards, to augment it versus the correction of things that are that are substandard. But but I mean, like the the really good example here would be pacemakers. Like, um, you know, I think or or a lot of different uh, medical devices. But pacemakers, mm-hmm. I think, are really easy. It's a real easy target. But so we're not getting to the root of the problem. You're you're treating the symptom and not the cause. Mm-hmm. Um, in in the long run, it's better to treat a bad heart by breeding people with better hearts than it is to replace millions and millions of hearts mm-hmm. with with machines. But I think that we're that's my argument from last week is that we're at that point in society where we realize that I think collectively and have acknowledged like, well, <laughs> all right, this is the direction we're going to go, and then like we we can't. We can't. We're, we're faced with so many different dilemmas, uh, morally and, and ethically, as far as like what to do with patients, what to do with people, what to do with the growth of technology that can save these people. That of course we're going to choose taking control ourselves rather than leaving it to to nature, so to speak. But also, do you think that um, nature is going to have a the best solution possible since evolution? Is uh, Dawkins termed the blind watchmaker? Things settle into place and then they work, but it's not on purpose. It's just how things time. always given time. But I, I think that you know. But not if we intervene. I think that right. But um, do you think that the people that are getting pacemakers are necessarily breeding more than other people? Typically, you're getting a pacemaker a little bit late in your breeding career. But that's just one element. Yeah, I mean, yeah. there's a lot of other different okay. things. Yeah, I mean, the example I gave last time was glasses. Um, you know, I have terrible eyesight. Not not terrible, but bad. Okay. Um, you know, four out of five of us sitting at the table have glasses. Um, and ideally, we would not. Get out. Right? <laughs> Get the fuck out. Get out of here. Have <laughs> <laughs> you guys always had glasses? Is that new? Mm-hmm. I, this, I, I bought mine last week. This, yeah, is this your first week? <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. didn't get the memo. I mean, no, he, he got the memo. He just went out and got fucking bionic eyes. Like, <laughs> y'all are lazy. <laughs> like, right now, he's got target acquired. <laughs> no, so we're we're systematically removing any selective pressure against a lot of these minor genetic failures, which seems like it's only going to let them get worse. Probably, Slowly, but inevitably. Probably will, which is the challenge for us to make them better artificially. I think. Yeah, that but that's that's an arms race. It is an arms race. That's not a solution. That's that is a short term bad. What do they call it on Wikipedia? Um, there's a word for Article. this, like no common yeah. common mistakes, anti patterns. I don't. Mm-hmm. Know, I don't know why it's. That's what they call them. It's it's a common mistake. It doesn't work. 
It's an arms race. Well, I wouldn't have thought that uh, America's home, Funniest Home Videos would have worked either, but... Really? It did. You didn't think under. that people would like gone. to, like... You don't think Schadenfreude's, uh, like, a well, standard selling point? <laughs> he fell down, went boom! Boom! Sales. We need to have more people fall down on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I think that, that what you, you're thinking... I don't know what you're thinking. I'm um, actually mm-hmm. like what? What are you interpreting? What I'm saying? I'm raising questions, and you're definitely giving answers. But I'm saying that I don't think we got those answers. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm not setting up any type of argument. What I'm saying is that there is this <clears throat> argument, and that that if we look at even you know going back as far as as um, people like Aristotle trying to find the good, mm-hmm. well, and Socrates before him. I mean, like what what is it that is the good? In this situation, on a practical level, here, uh, if I could do a little pivot shift, how do you feel about manipulating your own genetics for either geni- you know genetic mm-hmm. defects or for augmentation? Like, let's say you want different hair color. Let's say you want to get rid of your innate eye condition, so you don't need the glasses. Manipulating your your own DNA is that problematic to you? Is that different from glasses? I would say that if that were possible and if we understood the side effects fully that would probably be a good thing. Okay. So so you're open to the manipulation of yeah. the actual genes I'm, of the individuals. Yeah, I'm saying the, the genetic solution is the one that sticks. The technological solution is the one that crumbles as soon as we have an oil crisis. Okay. So your concern is longevity of the yeah. fix. And, and, and I, I'm concerned about our reliance on bionic technology um, being a major Achilles heel in the future. But you're okay with um, altering our genetics? Like having a choice about what is genetically there. So like if we mm-hmm. all wanted to have blonde hair, we could all have blonde hair and be the same person. Yeah. That's creepy. You um, dye your hair blonde. I do. Okay, just yeah. just just throwing I, that no, out. That there. was why. I said <laughs> okay. That was just checking that it. was the point. I was trying to right. was that, but I feel like if if we allow for genetic alteration, we're going to live in a world where everybody's exactly the same, where there's not very much difference. Which is interesting though, because we actually already do live in a world mm-hmm. where basically everyone is like we, we have so much genetically in, mm-hmm. in common with everyone else in the human race that like, you look at other species and. The uh, genetic diversity is off the roof. Like you don't even understand how these, how that percentage of difference <laughs> in DNA could possibly mm-hmm. breed. But humans are incredibly specialized, and like the modifications that we'd be making would be very slight. But they, yeah, if, you know, everybody ended up looking the same. That's kind of the boat that we're already in. It's just that we get nitpicky about differences. Well, we always want to cure diseases. We do, and, and, hopefully. Well, yeah. I mean, and and ever since we've really been able to kind of recognize. Look, Ever since we've been able to, to find ways in which to heal for whatever cause, whatever, you know, treatment, um, that has been the type of, of, of meddling in those affairs. I don't really see it much differently now. I, as far as, as, as what we're talking about, like the, some of the more advanced pieces of that, uh, 3D printing a heart, for instance, or heart valves. See, I, I feel personally that the, the the road to attempting to uh, breed out traits that are undesirable, even mm. if they are traits that are very clearly undesirable, things that kill you immediately mm. or have an extremely good chance of killing you within 15 years of your lifespan, we don't have a good way of making a governing body for human breeding. Um, it's been attempted in the past. Wasn't very popular uh, in the long term, so. Um, but but that's what I said. I mean, it, there, this should not be a central authority. Obviously, that is not the only solution. That's the only way to do a breeding program, though. Like, if you want to get puppies to look super ultra cute, you gotta have one dude that's throwing away a lot of puppies. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yes, that's, that's just the, that's the reality of the matter, and, and you're gonna get you know you don't you don't want to know what's in the sausage, so it doesn't you know are you happy with the end result? Even though it would probably end up ending the lives of a whole bunch of people. Puppies, puppies also have a lot of other problems uh, because they're so inbred. 
They do, and that's a that's a major problem with man trying to breed for specific traits. I is that you end up with puppies that are that are purebreds have a lot of genetic problems. Right, <laughs> but it's without a central authority, you're not breeding for specific traits. You have all these different peoples and countries and cultures, and in individuals saying, "I want my kid to be slightly taller than me, Mike." Um, not than me, good lord. Um, or, or, or smarter, um, or, or whatever else. I think people actually already and do that in having sex with people that they're attracted to. Yeah. So that, that actually works out, like, on yeah, the whole, it's working. been pretty good. And yes. that's working. See, and that? if you amplify that effect a little bit with some genetic understanding, then you've got faster evolution going toward where it was already going. And that's what uh, I'm saying. Well, you don't know where there. evolution is going. No, evolution think. just goes. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Uh, yes, what you got? I'm, I'm saying we make our sexual encounters more powerful with uh, no, an understanding of That point makes no sense, because last week what I said was, if you are asking me about making a baby, I'm going to pick the tallest woman on earth. Mm-hmm. If you're asking me about who I'm dating, I'm going to pick someone smaller than me, hence the girl that I'm dating. Mm-hmm. Because to me, her and I are just normal people when we're together. I'm not going to be with some Sasquatch. No way. That would be hilarious <laughs> to everyone except me. <laughs> I'm not going to live that. I don't fuck with that. No. Even the so, Sasquatch would laugh? She that's would absolutely. That's the only reason she would date that's me. That's gonna be a rough relationship, man. <laughs> so that from beyond that <laughs> scenario <laughs> does not make <laughs> sense because that sexual selection that you're referring to, that it, oh, it will just happen that way through sexual selection. No, mm-hmm. because I am not sexually attracted to somebody that's taller than me, and that is the only mm-hmm. way to breed babies that are taller than I. I am. I know, but but that's not for everybody. Is in, you're sexually you know what I'm sexually yes. attracted to? No, no. Well, you disagree with me. What I'm saying is he was referring to me specifically because he mentioned that me earlier when he said whatever it was, tall women or yeah. tiny children or whatever he was saying. And I, I'm think, saying that that doesn't... I think that we can necessarily. typically expect tiny children. From my kid. No, just in general. <laughs> yeah. And then they never grow up. Goddamn Peter Pan over here. <laughs> So I don't know. I disagree with that. That's not a core. That's so not a way that have, would work. What if you could have your cake and eat it too? You would be a what magician. You yeah, you talk, you're talking talk about altering DNA. You can't just you rely can sleep on sleep with your selection. short woman, and you can <laughs> and have t- tall babies. Yeah, so that they could beat me up when they're thirteen. Okay, and definitely you, don't go. Then you moderate it, and you have no. I know. Babies. Yeah, no. That'd be great. So if what is the perfect to, height for for? If there was a way to alter DNA, yes, so that I could be. So that you can attracted to who I'm attracted to and still have babies that I think could exist in the world without the troubles of being tiny, yeah, of course, I'd be like all that. So that I mean, that's exactly why I, I like to write about the the thought of designer children. It's it's. I think that that I'm sounds not awful. Against it. Like cho- deciding for your child what they're going to be. Uh, well, it, as, long as, you, well as, as long as you as long as you adjust it. As long as you adjust it so that they, like, if you adjust their genetics so that they actually are happy about that, then it's not a problem. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. Because they're pumped. They're like, thanks, bro. work on that first. No, but right. And then the other. We need to solve human happiness, and then we can go on to solving disease. What's what's wrong with deciding for another person what's going to make them happy? What's, no, no, what's wrong with. That's what you're saying, What's wrong with guiding the genetics of an unborn child? You're deciding for this child what they. Want you're deciding, but what's the alternative? What if, you, what if you thought that they would be really unhappy then if you, you let them have Lou Gehrig's? What's, what's like they'd the probably not be pumped about that. And the alternative you could is having a out. child and being happy with the child that you have. The alternative is not deciding. It's 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 not deciding. It's deciding to have a child regardless of. You know, like I'm short, mm. and if I had a child with a short man, I would probably have a short child. I wouldn't think, oh my god, my poor baby is going to be short. I would think I love my baby. Yeah, and I, I love my child. And I don't think that's going to ever go away. Well, hopefully not. Or you know, it's never going to go away. That I don't think me having like a mothers baby. are like going universally stop loving their children. I'm not which unless exact- we genetically program them to. Yeah, which um, is exactly Lord. why it doesn't make any sense that you have not to a good long term solution. I'm saying, but which Sorry. is. A- which is exactly why it doesn't make sense that you have this whole philosophical thing that you just rely on, well, it should be a matter of pride. Because it will mm. never, ever be a matter of pride. Because parents mm. are never going to be like, I, we shouldn't have 
children. We love each other, but the fact is, we've got bad genes. We should not make a baby. That's never going to happen. So why that not? can't be. Or why not? Or when they make those choices. We're too modern. Yeah, I think. That, or when they make those choices. And I to think say, that uh, also they're not making these choices. Typically, well, people just yeah. have babies. I mean, on the on the list is like okay, well, we're we're going to go ahead and make these decisions. We want how, on a scale of one to ten, how smart do we want our kid to be? It's like fucking ten. Turn it to eleven. Yeah. Then <laughs> what kind of yeah. distance is that relationship going to be? I mean, yeah. like, or yeah, seriously, or throwing out the whole gay card. You know, yeah. Uh, that yeah. I, I assume ten percent of the population will still want gay children, so we'll probably still have a ten yeah. percent. But even but if they didn't, if no one were born gay, then it's not a loss. If there's no one gay, am I wrong? Because there's well, no depends. diversity. Depends on what the good is. If if you what give is people, the fucking good? Yeah. If you give people the option to choose whether or not their child's going to be smart or tall or whatever, they're always going to choose the thing that they think is the best thing, and then you wind up in a society with no diversity. Or a, a, a fantasy of some really whacked out, ungenetically mm-hmm. modified people who couldn't make good decisions. Right. <laughs> yeah, I, I, think, I think there's enough diversity in the world, and will continue to be, that regardless of what pop music is doing, there, there will be diversity in children, assuming we had even absolute control of, of what our children would look like. Well, uh, what like when we start shipping them from third world countries to diversify our own population? Also, my, my understanding is like, and I could be incredibly racist saying this, but yeah, eh. um, in South Korea, I believe there's a, a pretty big bent towards facial reconstructive surgery mm-hmm. to the point that a reasonable percentage of the of the female population has adjusted towards a norm. Mm-hmm. It's yeah, I okay, I did hear something about that yeah. because it's actually it, it is considered uh medically necessary for yeah. socialization. Right, right. Sure. We say the same about braces in this country. And in some cases they're required, and in some cases they're just augmenting rather than correcting. So yeah. Mm. So would it be better that they were born with the faces that they would almost certainly end up wanting? Or should they have to go through a painful surgery? But we're, you're deciding before they're born what they want. Or you're failing to decide. It, you you can't fail to decide what somebody else wants because if the, only, the only person... I would never, ever want anyone else to make a decision for me. Mm. And so if my parents would have decided before me, for me... My parents made enough decisions that were bad about my life. I don't want them to have any control over but my if, physical if body. If your parents were given you know. the choice, they either decide or they decide not to decide. Who doesn't open the envelope? You know, I think that, that, that that's one of the questions. Like, what do you what do you do in the scenario? Let's say that, that because this is this is a far flung scenario, but maybe not all that far flung. It takes a lot of programming, I'm sure, to program a person. But we're getting there. Um, You've got a sheet in front of you. Karina, you're pregnant. You're going to have a baby. It's going to happen. Now, here's your preferences list. Do you pick it up, crumple it up, and throw it into the trash can, or do you look at it? I mean, I'd like to look at it, but I don't think that I'd want to fill it out. This is what they did to me last week. Okay. And don't I let, don't, them, I don't, let them do this. I don't, I don't no. think that I would make choices for my child... Because I don't know who this person growing inside of me is. But like that's you get what that's the they nature of yet. parenthood. That saying. is the nature of parenthood is making choices for your child. You can't not make choices for your kid. Oh, Where's they going to grow up? Option. What school are they going to go to? Am I going to enroll them in this class or not? These are formative choices. Well, but they're not genetic choices. It, Which is an interesting point. So let's say you get that list, and right before you crumple it up. There's like two asterisks on there. Like you should probably definitely look at these two. And like one of them is they're going to get a you know like ALS, like they're gonna get Lou Gehrig's. Mm-hmm. And you got the option there to pull the trigger and pop that one out. Like I'm gonna make sure that they don't almost certainly die at an early age or have a very difficult life. Mm-hmm. Now, you're not killing the child, you're killing that selection uh, that little selection of genetic code. And then replacing it with uh, what is understood to be an innocuous replacement from either you, your partner, or a neutral third party. Like, do you do you pull the switch on that? I don't. That's. I mean, that's a hard question. 
I'm going to be real honest. That's a really hard question. I said that like at least a hundred times last week. No joke. They did the same fucking thing to me. Yeah. It's, it's a hard question. I agree that, you know, that's a very difficult thing to think about. I, I think that when you get pregnant with a baby, when you decide to have a baby, you do run the risk of having a baby that's going to be sick. And, and Instead decided to have a baby. Right, yeah. you're making a decision, not a, not only for your child, but that your child should exist. Yeah. That's making choices for your kids. And I'm deciding that I want to have a baby that exists. I'm not going to say I only want to have a baby if it's going to be a girl. I only, I'm going to, if my baby comes out of my body and it's a girl, I'm going to murder it. Like, I'm going to love my baby regardless. And... I want to live in a world that's diverse, that's full of possibilities. And there's a possibility that the baby could be sick. That's one of the possibilities. But is that a positive aspect to being diverse? That some of some of yeah, the, the population so. is sick and dying, as opposed so. to different color hair and different height and things like that? I that believe, some yeah. babies born should be sick and dying, and we should spend taxpayers' money and time and resources on keeping them alive, right? Not, they're never going to get better, but we are spending time, resources, all of that to keep these children alive so and they can grow to be... Pain. Right, so that they can grow to be teenagers, young adults, and then die. And we have that same argument with the elderly as to whether or not, you know, if they get so achy, should we just put them down? Oh, that, that goes into it. Yeah, okay, that, that's going to go, that's going to go too far. I, How do you mean? Because because that's such a, a rich sort of uh, sort of discussion on its own right. But but the one one place I, I want to almost try and keep this to is is where we're making these decisions as far as the changes that that we are willing or willing to uh, decide on for our babies. I keep thinking back to dogs. Yes. Yeah. Um, are you willing to make that choice as a uh, as a dog owner? And a lot of these people, I mean, many, many of you out there are very attached to your... We were just sharing pet photos here uh, before before the podcast began. But we were looking at... And what what were we saying? We were talking about you can breed a Pomeranian with anything and it just turns out cute? Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Like 100%. Now, do I want to make that decision for my, my, my uh, son or daughter? No. Why? What's the difference? I mean, obviously. I, I would not have a, a breeded dog necessarily either, though. So well, like, I, like the I, funny thing is, I had a good friend of mine say to me in response to last week's con, uh, compass. 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 I had a good friend of mine say oh, to me in response to last week's podcast, so would you consider humans to just be breeders from now on. In that set of philosophy, do you now consider us to be breeding a specific type of children rather than parenting and, and making choices? You're now breeding in the same way that you're breeding dogs. Well, in what way do we... What, I mean, in what way do we not do that? Okay, same. Same sees. <laughs> because we go... Be, no, no, no. Because we don't... It, I the, agree. the question, what you were just saying, no, no, we do not... No, we don't consider ourselves to breed humans the same way we breed dogs. He was saying consider humans to be breeders in the same way that we breed dogs. The point that Jeremy just brought up, the point that my friend was asking me, is that I where think, humanity is moving? I think that implies a central agency, which I've already denied. I don't think it does. I don't think that we're going to have central agencies like that much longer. That's why we can't have bionic eyes. No, I don't. I, I'm not saying it like that. I'm not no. saying like I'm seeing hellfire. I'm saying that we're the democratic system. process has has gone quite a lot different uh, <laughs> differently than than a lot of other political systems. It, it will be more voted on by the public. It will be more democratic. Quotation marks. I don't think you're going to have many central organizations anymore. We do that one. What the hell, people? <laughs> Are we breeders Point. like dogs? I'll clap. <laughs> I thought we were whistling. Dog breeds. Considering human beings to breed people in the same way that we breed dogs, like Jeremy just mentioned, you want to 
Pomeranian plus a husky. I have a husky female. I go find a male Pomeranian and I breed them. So that's the question is now we're talking about humans moving into that same direction where you're actually picking, I guess, I don't know, for your child or for if it's for yourself, but you are, you become a breeder rather than, I guess, sexual selection. It's now different. There are people who do that. I mean, I've met women who are looking for someone to have babies with. Oh, and also the frozen sperm industry is yeah, very much yeah, like, oh, it's cool that. to go to. Yeah. All right. Close enough. I wouldn't do that. <laughs> I'd want to have a baby with somebody I loved. Oh, <laughs> Aren't we old-fashioned? I'm having nothing but robot babies. <laughs> so you love robots? I love robots. It's They're just because of the way they look at me. <laughs> All the time. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> NSA. Uh, I, I think the dog breeding is a false analogy because in that situation, there's a whole other species. It's like a god looking down on, on, on Canis Familiaris and saying, thou shalt be this. Exactly. Um, so. And that's not what, what uh, self-managed human evolution, to coin a horrible term, would be. Except for that, um, have you ever met a baby? Yes. You're like a god to them. <laughs> like, you're huge and you can do anything. But you can make already, things disappear. They're already Even if you're bad at magic. Ways. Genetically. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they, yeah, they're set in their ways. They're so. in a genetic rut. <laughs> I guess, yeah, I guess we can all agree that babies are in a genetic rut. That's a good... <laughs> we'll make up the topic for next week. <laughs> no. So much of my frustration uh, as far as, as, again, with the separation of humans and nature, humans and animals, everything is so special when it gets to, to humanity and is test worthy on everything else. That's, that's where, that's where I'm kind of wanting to drive part of this too. And I have a, a point that I think is salient mm-hmm. to that. Uh, I think at some point, perhaps last week or another week, you were speaking about hive yeah. animals. Yeah, yeah. Hive animals have a tendency to not give a flying fuck about which one of them dies because mm-hmm. their genetics are identical. Like they, they are, I mean, they're expressing them differently, which gives them their different forms. But from a genetic standpoint, it doesn't matter if the guy to the left of me dies or if I die, because the genes get passed on no matter what. And they are identical. I mean, right, they are literally all, identical. It does. Sisters, the genes are going to carry sisters. on no matter what. And humans are extremely close genetically. <clears throat> We're not a hive species yet. We've, I don't think, got the whole, you know, breeding only with the queen system down. I'm thinking we should probably mm-hmm. stick... I'm, you know, God save the queen and all that, but I ain't tapping that. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> you would still just be a sister. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah. absolutely. But anyway, so uh, I think that uh, I think the genetic similarity of humans also uh, creates a little bit more protectiveness. So we are more protective of each other than we are about dogs. Oh well, thank you very much for leading into that. <laughs> that's 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 like a one of the cornerstones of of what I think. As the the race does race isn't enough, uh, you know. Like it 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 requires other species. We need to segregate by other categories. We too. need to have other species to really appreciate what it's like to be a dog. Other species of humans. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. coyotes can still breed with the regular dog population. Oh well, coyotes so. are, are you know there's 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 um, arguments that the red wolf never actually existed. It was just a weird inbred inbred coyotes. Right. Uh, but yeah, they'll they'll breed with anything and can. Yes. That's like you know, anything? golden. Well, any. Yeah, watch out! <laughs> have you not seen coyote? They have that power. Right. Was, was that excitement in your voice? <laughs> <laughs> any dog species. Well, I guess. But <laughs> oh, Canis latrans. This is uh, this this hive mentality is. I, I think I, I came to this why I disagreed with your comfort with technological augmentation. My comfort with it, or yeah. my my bringing you it up. You excited about it. I'm excited about everything I ever talk about. Okay, well, I was like, <laughs> whoa, I don't want to talk about that. Cause that's, no, no, no. That's I was excited because it, it seemed like it was very perplexing. Uh-huh. Well, let me let me continue anyway, and uh-huh. let me just put it on you so I can attack you and beat you down. Mm-hmm. Uh, that seems reasonable. Um, sure. Yeah. It's the usual method. Um, Would you listen to most anything I've ever said? Where is it that this is a good idea? I'm going to go ahead and allow a full-on assault on Jeremy at this time. (laughs) Um, 
at a rating. I, I was I was <laughs> arguing that um, a reliance on technology uh, for survival for augmentation um, is a reliance on civilization, um, which is essentially to say that I did not want to give up my individuality to become part of a hive organism. Which is a concept. It was a collective hive mind. Uh, I believe it was... Uh, what's what's the book? Uh, I Sing the Body Electric. It was like where Mars has a human colony, but they've all created a hive mind. Oh, yeah. And so they grok things instead of learning them. Mm-hmm. They just reach out into the into the uh, collective and grab that information. And they're like, all right, I know what we're talking yeah. about. Let's roll. Mm-hmm. So you would, you would opt out of that kind of where, com- communist uh, where idea. I am, where I am currently, who I am, uh, not having been born into that hive... Um, yeah, I mean, I think I think we're on the cusp of that, where we're so specialized that none of us can exist outside of civilization. Um, but I I like to imagine that I'm not so far away from the past that if everything went to shit, just me and my body could make it in the world. I was gonna go down to you. No. Landslide of how could how many different ways can the world end? But we we already know that it, it doesn't matter because we're going to die when it happens. Yeah. Like statistically, or before. But that's that's, that's, or that's before. You know, this probably thing. before actually. <laughs> Since ancient times, that's been the same sort of thing. Hmm. It's been the same concern for anybody in a city. Yeah. Again, like what it what uh, as far as um, <laughs> was it with the the ancient group? What's the the most lazy of occupations? Philosopher. Whatever no, job no, I can get. No. Most lazy of occupations is the shepherd because they just follow their meals around all day. <laughs> yeah, but you have to follow the fucking. I know. Well, can I be a sandwich herder? Yeah, <laughs> I was a sandwich artist. Um, I was. No, I think that that's always that's always. Or been. was it sandwich craft? <laughs> but there's there's a difference between being a shepherd um, and and being. Like the the financier of a factory farm operation in the middle of nowhere that has everything piped in and piped out, mm-hmm. and uh, those people are not able to survive in the wild. I think that's a salient point um, with regard to factory farming. Genetically, most of those animals are pretty much identical, and in the wild, they'd probably have a really rough time if they were mm-hmm. released because they're lumbering monstrosities that were created by mm-hmm. way of selective mm-hmm. breeding for yeah, a specific absolutely. trait. Yeah, to be docile and have lots of meat. Yes, basically. Which is presumably not what we would do to Well, ourselves. we could if we would decided to become a society mm-hmm. of cannibals. Yeah. We, we'd be docile ourselves, though. Well, no, not not the super predators. Oh, uh, uh, so we divide into classes. Right, obviously, okay. yeah. yeah. It'd be easier is to keep the cows. You know, I'm a humanitarian. I thought you were a vegetarian. Let's see. That's exactly where it's I, going. I only come on, come on. I, I only eat things that can enunciate their feelings. <laughs> to me, it's it's about what what a technological species such as ourselves does when confronted with questions that we can potentially answer with technology in a circumstance and a circumstance that. that where God does kind of play a role. So when monkeys... <laughs> and that's what concerns me right now. Well, my question is, so when monkeys learn to use tools, is that not technology? Is it no longer nature? Is what we're doing not nature? Thank you! You're getting to it! Booyah! No, seriously, that's what that's we That's what it is! We're trying to move the conversation forward, and that is absolutely Okay, correct. well, here it is. So, of course it's technology. Well, that's what I'm saying. So how is what we're doing not nature? What is wrong with what we're doing? Because we separate ourselves well, from it. Well, that's, that's an interesting thing. Is nature right? <laughs> nature inherently has no fucking opinion because the wrong yeah. die. Mm, that's a good point. And they were still part of nature. They're just a part <laughs> of nature that is now dead. Huh? You've got that look. I, I'm just paying attention. Just trying to form an opinion. Is it wrong <laughs> to not do what nature would do, and is that even possible? What does that mean? When a monkey learns to use a tool, mm-hmm. is that no longer nature? That is nature. What would of be the moral implications of it not being nature? So what I'm saying is, we we augment our eye, now we have bionic eyes. How is that not nature? 
It is. It is. It's the extended yeah. phenotype. And this is something that Dawkins actually went into. It, the, the genes that are expressed in a beaver when it goes to create a dam and create a large flooded landscape that is better for other beavers, including itself, those came from the genes of the beaver. It didn't do it because it was like, you know what I like? It's a bunch of fucking logs. And like everybody being swampy. And we're doing that now because I'm feeling it. It's like, nope, I'm a beaver. Let's go fuck around. And it does it because its genes are like, hey man, it's not soggy. Let's get a little soggy up in. And the beaver's like, ah, cool genes. And so it goes out and does that. And the, the thing is that it then changes the entire landscape of the area because it's a beaver that's like, I'm going to go fuck around. But it's not, it's not it's consciously doing that. I don't think that the beaver wakes up in the morning and is like, well, I could live in a condo or <laughs> but, but swamp time. <laughs> and then just swamps it up. Like, it doesn't make a decision to do that. So that, And I think that humans then changing their environment, it's like we do. We're different. Th- no, yeah. no, we're, we, we're not different. We're literally using our, we're using our words and using our tools like the monkeys did. We, we, we got tools and they, we, the tools got complicated, complicated enough that we had to make words about the tools and then once we did that, we're like, oh shit, dude mm-hmm. just did a fucking 360 flip off of that cliff and he died, but that was awesome. I'm gonna figure out how to not die and learn from each other. So, I think that at some point, at some point, at some point, humans, humans, <laughs> sorry. Someone did a 360 flip and died, and they were like, shit, man. We got to but not die. Right. (laughs) And that's the thing. And so humans learn from each other, and we use the technology that we create, and that is the extended phenotype of humanity. We change the water around us in Mm -hmm. extremely complicated and weird ways, and we stand on the shoulder of, of of the giants that propelled us there. So I can't make a smartphone. I can't do it. I can utilize a smartphone. And I don't choose to not use a smartphone just because I can't build one like down in my basement. And I think I think that even if you could change my genetics to the point that I could build a smartphone, I think you would have fundamentally changed the nature of my humanity. Like I think it'd be mostly like calculator and somebody with like really good surgical skills. <laughs> but, Bring me more solder. Right. Yes. Yeah, it puts the solder on the board. <laughs> So, I think that a genetic solution to uh, mechanical issues is is not the most productive way to go about things. So I think we're, we're kind of butting heads on these arguments. But here's here's what I'm saying, if I can use the, the beaver metaphor. That's um, my favorite metaphor. Yeah. <laughs> um, is that that's, that's all well and good, and good for the beavers, so long as they still know how to make a dam. Because if they, if they take for granted for a millennia that there is going to be a swampy area and they all forget how to make a dam and the flood comes and washes it away, then what do they do? Well, then only the beavers that remembered how to make dams will survive and nature will go on its course and you'll have a slightly reduced yeah. beaver population for a short period of time I, until I think, the, the few that remember how yeah. go get busy. I, I think that's probably the answer and, and, it's, and it's almost moot to, to argue this because... Um, if people want to augment themselves in the hope that uh, the technology is going to be available for the next generation, why not? There will be enough people who don't do that um, who will survive if and when civilization falls for a time. Well, we ended last week's podcast with, with Jeremy mentioning the plague thing. Like, if and when the plague happens, I mean, I think that's kind of the culmination of all of these issues is... Yeah, the, the bionic eye industry is going to go down. There's a plague, and yeah, there'll be more people alive who stumbling around with bad eyes, or no, stumbling well, around with, with plague mostly. Yeah, without <laughs> bionic eyes, and they'll be the ones to reproduce in the same way that the flood washes away the dams, and there's only so many beavers left. Well, there you have it. Please be sure to join us again next week, where we will talk about something completely different. You've been listening to the Meddling with Nature podcast with Karina Young, Nate Wessel, Mike Price, and yours truly, Jeremy Johnson. Be sure to visit us on www.meddlingwithnature.com and keep us in mind for all your dissection and taxidermy needs.